All right, this is podcast three in chapter four, number 4.3, and we're going to be looking at the percent composition of compounds today and how we can uh, determine what kinds of elements or how much of one kind of element is in a compound versus another. How do we know what compounds are made of? Well, the first thing that scientists look at is the percent composition, and we have machines that do this now, but we can still find this from data. Composition. So we're going to be doing labs where we need to calculate the percent composition of different elements. And we can also look at the molecular weight of a, of a substance. And we can use the molecular weight data to find the percent composition. So both of these are tools that we need. This is similar to the composition of a hydrate. So from last chapter, chapter 3, we looked at things like iron 2 chloride dihydrate where we'd want to know the percent of water in relation to the total mass of this compound. So when you were solving that equation, you had your mass of H2O on top, the piece of the whole, and this gets divided by the total, the total mass. Multiply that by 100 and you get a percentage. Mass percent of, co of compounds works exactly the same way. Instead of looking at Water, though, we would be looking at something like chlorine or something like iron or one particular element out of the entire compound. So to find the percent, I just gave the equation, but our percentage is equal to 100 times the mass of element or of an element. And that mass is divided by the total compound mass. So a piece of the whole, just normal percentage, right? So this isn't anything more than what we've done so far. We're just looking at it in a different light. To find the total mass of compounds, all we do is we add up the elements. And you should already know this from podcast one, looking at the gram formula mass. So we add up the elements. So uh, carbon, if I'm just looking at carbon, this is equal to 12.01 uh, atomic mass units or grams, depending on if we're doing moles or not. As soon as I add extras, I've got 12.01 for my carbon plus 16 times 2 for the oxygen here. Remember, you only need to go to two decimal places when you're looking at your atomic masses. So let's do an example. Calculate the percent abundance of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in formaldehyde. And this is the chemical formula of formaldehyde, CH2O. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start by finding the total mass of CH2O. So the carbon is 12.01 and that's plus two hydrogens, so 1.01 plus 1.01 .01 or 2.02, .02, I don't care which way you do it because it's just addition, plus 16.00. So my total mass when I add all this up is 30.03, and I'm going to use grams just because we're talking about atomic mass units, but we're going to be looking at molar quantities of this and we'll be converting to grams anyways. So this is the total mass, this is what everything is going to get divided by. If you separate these out now. I want to know carbon, I want to know hydrogen, and I want to know oxygen. The mass of the carbon, I've got one carbon atom in this entire molecule, so carbon is giving 12.01 grams per 30.03 grams of total. Or I've got one carbon or one carbon uh, mass unit divided by the total here, so all we do is 12.01 divided by 30.03. For hydrogen, I've got two hydrogens, H2 so I'm looking at the total hydrogen mass. So 1.01 .01 plus 1.01 .01 is 2.02, .02, and that gets divided by the total, 30.03. .03. The oxygen is everything else left over, right? Plus I only have one oxygen, so this is the last 16 grams out of the entire molecule. Uh, 0, 0.3, this should be 0, 0.3 up here. So when I divide these all out and I multiply them by 100 each, I find the percentages. So this is equal to 40%, roughly 40% carbon. Uh, this is roughly 6.7% hydrogen. And the oxygen is the last of it. So this is about 46.7. So the oxygen is going to be 53.3% oxygen. So by looking at the total mass of a compound and the uh, constituent masses of each of the atoms, we can find percentages of anything. You can also work backwards. If you know that carbon 
is 40% of the total, we can find the actual mass of the carbon. And that's what a lot of the problems are going to be. So you're going to have a, a compound and it's going to say this compound is 15% carbon. What's the mass of carbon within this compound? You can just look at the total mass if it gives it to you, look at the percentage, and then find the missing variable x. So this, again, is nothing more complicated than basic algebra. We're just looking at it in a different spin. So to practice, this one it takes some practice, but not quite as much as the mole, but it's still going to take practice. So what you need to do is read chapter 3.4 or section 3.4 in the, in the book. There's a percent composition worksheet that is just drilling basic uh, with this percent, how many grams or with this many grams, what percent. And then again, four book questions, just looking at the basic concept again. Uh, please practice this. This is a skill you need to have down, and we'll take a look at it in class if you have more questions.